Hello again. There have been some changes around here. For example, we replaced the fluorescent lights with LEDs of much nicer temperature color. I like blue lights, so they're blue. Additionally, we put a touchpad on the door so that people could get in and do the radio shows without a key. We moved the light switch from that cave to right there so that people with arms of normal or even super normal length could, uh, could reach that switch. And also to make things nicer, I put in a little, uh, you can kind of see it, but I put a neon, uh, a neon lamp switch there so it's noticeable when the lights are off. I'm going to sneeze now. I have a desk. It's nice. It's got chachis? Chachkas. Chachkas on them. And uh, QSL cards, which are not mine. They're all from the 50s, and half of them are from countries that no longer exist. They're pretty cool. Becky also has a desk. Should we think too hard about the fact the only place we could put it was the kitchen? Is that a bad look? Am I going to get in trouble for that? I mean, you've got other offices because you have a real job, so I don't feel too bad about it. But... There's that. Yeah. <laughs> that computer also doubles as a workstation for guests. So, but it has a phone for Becky. Well, I guess anybody could use it, but Becky needs a phone, so Becky has a phone. KTQA, this is Becky speaking. Oh, I heard you like the sound of your own voice. Is that true? And then there's the bathroom. Hello. Welcome to the bathroom. My name is Sam, your bathroom host. We are actually in the bathroom. Now, here's an interesting thing about the bathroom. It's, um, pretty small. And it's placed kind of near things. So in order to make sure that my studio doesn't contravene the provisos about chemical warfare in the uh, Geneva Convention, uh, we need to make, make the exhaust fan work. And one of the weird things we noticed when we got this place is that the exhaust fan didn't work. Except when we went to plug it in, when we took the lid off, we just noticed it was unplugged. So I plugged it in, That works fine. So why is it unplugged, you ask? There's no switch for it anywhere. So I had to come up with a little bit of a solution, which uh, you're going to see me build now. This is quite a soft. Is this? Hey, Becky, you want to bring me the uh, lighter? Sure. No. No, it's just really soft copper. Okay. Yeah, so here it is. It's. That's how we're going to turn the exhaust fan on and off, because why not? It's not exactly a tight fit in here, but it is a weird fit, so I got to be careful. Is this a polarized plug? No, oh, it shouldn't be. Let's turn that off. <laughs> I 
Is it chemical or biological warfare? Either way, it's a violation. But now, with the installation of this fan... We have something. Other than, you know, smudging the bathroom with toilet paper. So what I'm thinking we do is we put a, a pin or some, a safety pin and we just tie it here so that and I might need to position that a little bit so that it doesn't rub up so much against the uh, against the grill but now we have an exhaust fan and life here is a little bit more comfortable for those who have to operate in the studio and I may or may not be covered in asbestos wouldn't be the first time. What are you up to? Um, making holes and things. Holes and stuff and things. So we got these. Wait. These. I'm waiting. We can do this, like Sam said. Well, yes, but around. if I'm pre-drilling, I oh. don't want to have a whole thing attached to it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be efficiently lazy. Hey, look, tape. Hmm. What? They tape. probably had some sort of sign attached to it. The previous person's. Is that centered enough? I would be a little bit more careful given how heavy the thing is. Okay. Your ruler. Uh, I have a measuring tape right here. Writing device. And a uh, pencil. Nibs and knobs? Mm-hmm. So these micro microphone stands, these speaker stands came from um, Goodwill. They were busted because they had the... They had these plastic things for feet. And one was broken on each. So I just yanked them out with a pair of pliers. And then we put fuzzy feet on the bottom of them. And now they are being attached. How you doing? Good. Tired. 
Mm-hmm. Um, proud of myself for bundling lots of cables. That's what I was going to say is I think, uh, I, I think you should take a moment to reflect on the fact that today you punched things, you followed a tone tracer, you wired up some speakers, you created several patch cables, you, uh... By punch things, we don't mean, like, with fists. No, well, you might have done that, too. I wasn't around for that. Um... I wasn't hauling the bags of dirt for the garden. <laughs> but, uh, uh... You wouldn't know what half of those things mean a year ago. True. The only thing of those that I would have known was how to make an Ethernet cable. And I would have known it kind of poorly. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's pretty late. I just wanted to give you a chance to, I don't know, crow about your, your accomplishments of the day a little bit. Yeah, I think having the tiny small zip ties, I maybe could even get it a little bit cleaner in there, mounting all of the little bundled cables you know, to those little anchored zip ties. So, Becky, would you like to show people your work? Yeah. Okay. Sam made all of the TRS cables, but then getting to bundle them all together. And let's see, all of the Ethernet cables. You'll see some gray in addition to white because we ran out of the box of white Cat 5E. So there's a few little gray ones scattered in there. Um, it looks kind of a mess, but as you get along here, it looks a little bit better. So this is kind of the place where I, I could have seen me like mounting it to the floor, anchoring it to the floor there, because there's these little like white doohickeys that are from the previous user of this. There are even some that are, you know, still stuck up there. And I could have taken all of the wires and sort of just put them up there. But I'm happy with this so far. So, let's see. We can follow it along here. We also got the stuff from this patch panel. It all comes out here. Now that that cable's a little taut. What's that one? That's the that's the aux cable. It's quite taut, so we'll probably need to make one that's a little bit longer, give it some more slack. But that all goes up into there, along with that cabinet. Worth of uh, that punch panel, worth of stuff. Patch panel worth of it's late sam said it's late he wasn't kidding and then uh here they all come up here and connect in there so sam well it's two in the morning uh we just finished wiring the last components in for an essentially complete except not really like final wiring design. I haven't turned anything on. I haven't tested anything. I'm actually really quite frightened. When you talk about frightened, are we talking about like, hey, we could turn it on and get Frankenstein's monster. Uh, it's alive. Bzz. Or that we'll turn it on. Something won't work. And we don't know where in the whole chain it is not working. That is within the universe of things that I fear, yes. That is within the universe of things that I fear. Okay. Well, there's only one thing to do. We're going to do this very slowly, but I'm going to turn it on, and the main power switch is down here. On the power isolator. <clears throat> so. Okay. That power's on. We're seeing some lights. Okay. Not that LEDs show up very well on camera, but. Okay, the computer's on. CD player's on. The air check tuner is on. And is in fact tuned to 95.3 and suggests that it's tuned. Uh, clock's on. I guess nothing for it, but. Look, that monitor is not those, matte. Those monitors aren't hooked up yet. Well, the monitor's not matte, monitor so you can see me filming. Matte. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Disable. Mute. Oh, there's one more thing I didn't show off while we're celebrating and showing off that the lights are flashing on the things that you did. What? Uh, wiring up these speakers. Oh, the speakers, yeah. And uh, Sharon helped uh, fix them to the speaker stands, Ooh, the monitor stands. A I don't know if she... She didn't mention that. I don't know if she knows. I don't think it matters. So... All right. I'll tell you, uh, doing speaker wire? That was way more fun after doing Cat 5e. Hello? Hello? We have audio. Do it again. Hello? Okay, do it again. Hello? It even sounds kind of good. What can we be hearing that's buzzing? Fan going on in the uh, adjacent. Fridge compressor. I'm hearing the fridge compressor. Electrical noise from the fridge compressor or the actual fridge compressor? I'm literally hearing the fridge compressor. Yeah, I'm literally hearing the fridge compressor. I don't know if other people would hear it. In fact, uh, I'm going to have to tweak this to the point where the fridge compressor probably isn't going to be a problem. Um, hello. I'm not hearing air check at all, which is a concern. Why is it uh, the needle not moving? I No, I can hear it. Oh. Needles aren't going. No, program needles are going. Oh, got it. Audition okay. needles aren't going. I can put it on audition too, and then they're going. Ooh. Was that a skip in the CD? That was a skip in the CD. Oops. Guess we'll just have to patronize that band <laughs> and get a new CD of theirs. I don't think it's a problem with the CD. Sorry. Um, it's a, it's the CD skipping. I believe it is the fault of the player. Mm. This is the more broken of the two players we have. This is the only, this is the only cart, uh, I've got for the CD player. Like, I'm reasonably certain this is part of the problem too. Cause this is all mixed up. I think the lens just needs to be cleaned. Okay. Because I don't think this has been cleaned since 2009. You can't tell that I'm kind of freaked out? I can. It's... working. I'm a little worried that I can't get anything out of the monitors. That might be my poor speaker wiring. I really doubt it. All right, let's see how things are looking digitally. Uh... Oh. We don't have internet. Well, then digital stuff will suck. Yeah, digital stuff ain't going to work. We ain't got internet. Do you want to hold the camera and send me scurrying underneath again? No, just follow me. I broke my belt, so I'm using a PC power cable. I think I found the problem. Yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> But I did a pretty good job snaking it through the hole in the wall and through your office and around through the other wall and then yeah, oh, I just forgot to plug it in. <laughs> You're beautiful and you intelligent and you did everything fine. Just let me have my fun. <laughs> but the fact that we can hear it at all is the victory here. I have other CD players. I have four other CD players I could be using. That don't require that silly cart thing? Yeah. Well, two of them don't require the silly cart thing. <clears throat> one of them is just another one of those. But the thing is, uh, the thing about that one is it requires a little bit more expertise to use, but you can cue it to the frame if you need to. This doesn't make any sense. It's just playing on guess two? No, it's not even playing on guess two. Because now the CD player choked.
and stuff still going on. Stereo link. What the hell is coming in on guest two? These two. Jesus. Yes. That's quiet, though. Yeah, they're really low levels. What's... No idea. VoIP out. CPU one right. CPU one left. What channels are the CDs coming from? Should be 9 and 10. 7 and 8. So if I pull this, the go away. The left channel, 7, yeah. The one I pulled. Now you just plugged it back in. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Tracer? Yeah. Okay. How did you have sound come out of the tracer like that? You didn't hear me and uh, Phil talking about it? Is that when you run audio over it, the... Like, the other box just creates the tones, and this is a receiver for it. Okay. And so if you're playing audio over it, you can use the tracer to just hear what's being sent. Are your cables bad? I think some of my runs are bad. Just the TRS? Well, that's working. So does 9 and 10. Okay, let's... Can I just nuke this setup? Initialize. Yes. This looks saner. Hey, 9 and 10. Yeah, that's where we should be seeing it. And 1, because the microphone's there. Yeah. That's just ambient noise, right? Hey! Yes, yes it is. This looks righter. (laughs) But what I'm worried about is that I'm not seeing output. This is right. This is right. Nothing else is right. But that's... Hey, Becky, that's three channels working, flipping it on. Okay, three channels out of, like, 12. Yeah, out of of 18. So, we're doing okay. Okay. Um, Some puzzling things, though. Some puzzling things. I want to... I want to figure out why we don't have the talkback circuit, because that... I started with that because that should have been the easiest thing. Um, Well, you did tell me that doing speaker wire was also the easiest thing, and so maybe I got cocky. I don't think you screwed that up. But the fact is we have console microphone, we have CD1, and I could plug some CPU... Like, what what my plan... I've got a whole bunch of inputs here for CPU 1, CPU 2, uh, VoIP, phone, and vinyl. I haven't tested any of those yet, and those should run fine. And I was going to test it with with an audio interface, but I think... We'll need to troubleshoot the air check monitors. I think I need to start with the monitors and and the air check circuit, because without those, we're just a recording studio. Um... Also, this card player needs to come out. Whatever do you mean? You don't like your CD tracks interrupted five times per track? I have this off. That's why I couldn't hear it. <laughs> wow! But as as you could tell... Bzzz, it, well, that may... I, who knows what that is. Um, so where's hat mics on here? Here, have some light. I keep saying hat mics. I mean air check. Does air check come out here? I 
don't hear it at all. No, that's just buzz. That's just room buzz. As opposed to room buzz. Oh! There's a something. There's a little bit of something coming out of the speakers. I thought I was going to get away with using unbalanced audio for the air check circuit. And I think that was a mistake. What's it mean? Uh, I probably need to take one of the match boxes and wire it into the circuit. Um, so I got to repunch some stuff. Uh, no! I know, I know. Okay, so balanced versus unbalanced audio. Is a subject for another day. But I think I'm going to want to inject some balanced audio from some other source into the board to make sure I have it wired up right before I do something that ridiculous. So I've got another one of these. He's, you know, legit CD player. Right? Right. From actual radio. From an actual equipment. radio station. And then I have these super crap DJ CD players that have digital out and have this funky panel on it and just apparently use a basic computer CD-ROM drive um, that I picked up from a recycler for like 10 bucks a pop or something like that a million years ago. <sighs> People will probably like those better than these, but... In terms of using them? In terms of UI. It's got a big green friendly button on it. Wow, this one works even worse. <laughs> I prefer to only play 2.8 seconds of any track. Oh, did you hear that? That... Er this thing's got belt problems. Oh. Shouldn't have belt problems. Should have a belt. Why the hell is it making that noise? Well, I mean, you don't have a belt. You have a PC power cable. Ooh. You want to try the stupid DJ ones? <sighs> stupid DJ ones are going to require more effort because they don't have balanced outs. Want to see if the partnering radio stations have some they're not using? I know Radio Tacoma has two of the same model, because we ordered four and they got two, I got the other two. I think I might ask LPFM Solidarity for uh, best practice in practice in cleaning these things, or talking to the guy we got it from. Because um, it'd be nice if we could put these back in service. Alright, well, we know where we stand with CD players. I mean, honestly, I view CD players as secondary anyway, since... Most of the music we're going to be playing is going to be in some digital format. But then what will we put on all of these shelves, if not... No, we media? will have a C functional CD player, but it is not... It is not crash priority if we don't... If we launch without one. In fact, I kind of view a vinyl player a little bit more important than a CD player, because more people are pressing vinyl these days, because... Coolness. Why not? Also... Bunny ears. Tell us about the bunny ears. That's the antenna for the uh, air check receiver until we get roof access. That's a longer conversation. Um, well, okay. Uh, they need to replace the roof because it leaks and has trouble, as I think we've talked about before. They're going to replace the roof. And once they do that, I am going to be able to put up uh, antennas on the roof. Something a little bit more robust than yeah. that. Yeah, one of my standard ground plane antennas I use for FM radio. Because if an antenna costs more than $2, you've probably done it wrong. Um, I'm going to call it a mixed result, I think. But it's late, and I'm pretty tired. And I imagine you're pretty tired. Uh... So I'm suggesting we power this guy down and uh, get some rest and begin again tomorrow. Sounds great.